I don't blame the people for being ignorant. Because a lot of time we rely on the preachers for information. But if the preacher is blind, what do you think will happen to you? Did not the word of God say, if the blind leave the blind, both fall into the ditch? Do you not see how bad the churches have changed? The churches have changed. They have chose the devil over God. And I'm traveling around the world exhausting myself, trying to pull people back to God. And that's what's drawing so many people to this message. Even sinners have respect for this message. Sinners write me and say, look, I know you're telling the truth, PJ, but I'm not ready to, uh, to hang out with that holy preaching yet, but when I do get myself together, I'm not going to this junk that's called church. Even the sinner know this junk that's out here, it's not church. It's a club with the name church. That's all it is. I'm just a biblical policeman that rage a club. And I come with the Bible beating your pastor, beating your second wife, and being your third husband, being your homosexual deacon, and everything. And because I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of nobody other than God. Oh, there's not a man on this planet that strikes a drop of fear in me. That's why we go in anybody's state, town, village, and turn it upside down and burn it down with the Bible and ride off in the sunset. Because the word of God is the most important thing. Brothers and sisters, we want to bring you back to the original thing that God have here, and that's to be holy. God have never told us to be apostolic or Pentecostal or UPC or PAW or FX or UPS. Or oh, A, B, C, D, and all that. God didn't tell us to follow all them alphabets. God said, be holy. And when you be holy, you pick up the tradition of God. Holy Ghost tradition is not like these organization traditions. When you go after Bible tradition, you're going to fight organization tradition. Because organizations are centered around pleasing the board of directors. The Bible is centered around pleasing nobody but God. Are you getting me? So I find people who brag that they UPC and PAW. What in the world do I care? The only thing I'm interested in is are you holy? Jesus wasn't UPC. Jesus wasn't PAW. Jesus was in church of God in Christ. Jesus was holy. The Bible made it so strong until he said, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No man. So Phoenix, Arizona, let's get your Bibles ready so I can hurt your feelings enough for you to stay out of your church. Amen. Stay out of it. Well, Pastor Jennings, my daddy is the pastor. I wouldn't care if your daddy built the church by using the brick of his own house <laughs> and used a bathtub for the baptism of Paul and used a sink for a speaker's podium. I'm not interested in nothing but what God said. That's it. And when you are sent by God, I've never been in a Bible college in my life, never took a Bible course since I've been born. I was made a preacher. The same one that made the apostles made me a preacher. That's what make this message different from everybody's message. You can go on YouTube and listen to every preacher under the sun, but you won't find nothing like the truth of God. Nothing. The truth of God, get all down, hallelujah, down in your soul. Amen. And make you look at church different than you ever looked at it since you've been born. I let you know God is dealing with you. 
Anytime you've been going to church for years and you feel yourself dying, <clears throat> can you bear witness with what I'm telling you? Go to church for years. Be a usher, be a choir director, a musician. Work on church committees, fundraisers. Be there for years. And yet you can feel yourself dying. And then you say, wait a minute, what's, what's wrong with me? What's, what's wrong with me? Did, did I do something? Did I backslide? In most cases, there's nothing wrong with you. Problem is, there's no more food on the shelf. No bread. Jesus said, I'm that bread from heaven. No bread from heaven is in the church being served now. What's being served is man-made biscuits. Quick fix. No manna from heaven. Quick fix. No bread. No meat for the belly. No milk, which is the wisdom of God. So when that happened, you go to church year in, year out, every week. And slowly but surely, spiritually, you start plummeting. And understand this. Anytime you start dying spiritually, what starts to decrease in you that's godly, going to be replaced by something of the world that's going to increase. God go down and the world come up. And the very thing you start to be strong against because your soul is not being fed the word of God, you're going to start getting weak towards it. Right. Now, to fight this good fight of faith and to lay hold on eternal life, you got to be around some strong teaching. Because on your own, you can't do this. I don't get it. These folks go to church on Sunday just to run around and get hyped by a choir. I don't give two cents about your choir. The center of worship is the message. Never forget that. The most important part of church is God's word. Someone said, well, what about prayer? Isn't that important? It's not important as the word. How is that, Pastor Jennings? It is the word that teach you how to pray. Without the word, you don't know how to pray. Without the word, you don't even know what to sing. You can sing a lie just like you can tell a lie. Without the word, the man don't know what to preach. Everything must come from God's word. Everything. Amen. What of God is the GPS system of the church. Just like you got a GPS system in a car, you don't need it if you know where you're going. In order to get into the kingdom of God, you're not going to get around this. Get me, get me, Phoenix, Arizona. You're not going to get around this. Jesus said, I am the door. <laughs> Lord, I thank God for you to get into the kingdom. You got to come through scripture. You're not going to sing your way in. You're not going to shout your way in. You can get any old false prophet to lay hands on you and you pretend like you in some spirit, eyes rolled back, and on your way down, you look and make sure somebody catch you. That let you know you's a hypocrite first class. That's right. <laughs> Because if you in the, if you in the spirit, you ain't worried about nobody back there. No, not if you're in the spirit. Whenever you go to these religious meetings and you find these so-called Arizona healers, these scorpions and copperheads and rattlesnakes and tarantulas, <laughs> all in the pulpit, rodents and insects. That's right who slap their hands on you and push you on the floor and you like a fool fall down. That's right. You don't find nobody falling when we in town. <laughs> nobody fall. 
I got some get so hot over the word, they bend over and tip out. My job as a messenger of God is to resurrect your sleeping soul. Think of it, Phoenix. The Lord is coming. The Lord God Jehovah is coming for creation. And he's not going to look at how long you claim you're saved. He don't look at that. He don't look at how long you claim you had some Holy Ghost. Only thing God looking at is what's written here. That's it. Preachers have said for years that the Lord is coming looking for a church. Stop lying on the Lord. You look for something when you lose it. He didn't lose the church. The Bible ain't never said he, gonna, he coming looking for a church. The Bible said he going to present unto himself a glorious church. That means Jesus is coming back for the same thing he left here. That's right. All right. Let's go to work. Mm -hmm. In the book of Jeremiah. Open your Bible anywhere, Williams, and get busy. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Follow me. And we'll start reading at verse 18. And? For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord? Who hath stood in God's counsel? And hath perceived and heard his word? Yes. Who hath marked his word? Who hath marked his word? And heard it. And what? And heard it. That's what's the problem now. Mm -hmm. There's more noise and entertainment yeah. and more hype in the pulpit. But no word. That's right. The preachers are more focused on getting your height. That's right. Always telling you, look to the neighbor to the right and tell the neighbor something. Look to the neighbor on the left and tell the neighbor something. And then the preacher tell you, oh, just stand up and shake yourself. All this foolishness. <laughs> A bunch of folly. Amen. People out there in the congregations waving white handkerchiefs and all that junk like they're the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's right. Running around the church like they're in the Indiana 500. No God, no gospel. That's right. Pulpits full of women preachers. Right. Women evangelists. Amen. Amen. So that's where some of the churches you go to here. Oh. It ain't too hot that no women can't get up the pulpit. Amen. Some of them in the pulpit are your aunts, your grandmama, your wife, your mama. Oh, yeah. You talking about my mama? Yeah, your mama. <laughs> that's right. And you weak bums that claim you're Arizona men. Mm. Am I right? Mm. You're the head at home. You're the tail at church. That's right. You claim that you're a man at home, but yet you're under a woman preacher. Amen. Because you go to some Pentecostal church and they lied to you and told you, it ain't nothing wrong with women preachers. Well, who did Jesus send that was a female to preach? That's right. What woman did the apostles ordain to send them to preach? Amen. Women preachers has been alive for years from church organization. Well, Mary preached the first message. You show me that. And I moved my family from Philadelphia to Arizona. <laughs> show me that scripture that says Mary preached to anybody. Mm -hmm. Jesus rose from the dead the third day, and all he did was told Mary... Tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. That's it. How is that preaching? That's it. They ain't no different than me coming in town and tell my brother Santana wife, look, tell the folks in Arizona, meet me there at the hire for service. Amen. Who would be that hell deserving to say she preached? She, mm -hmm. Stop trying to make something in the Bible that's not there. That's right. Stick to what's written. That's it. If the Bible says something, stick to that. That's it. If the Bible don't have it, leave it alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is where bad teaching coming at. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Jenny, the Bible says the women, the, the women gonna prophesy, and old men shall see vision. Prophesying ain't preaching. No. It's given to a woman to prophesy, which is the foretelling of an event that's going to come. That's not preaching. No, no. Got to move on a woman that say, well, it's going to be an earthquake in Arizona in 2020. Yeah. She see that by the spirit and then she sit down. That's it. God use her. That's not preaching. That's not preaching. When you're talking about preaching, now she getting up analyzing the scripture. That's 
That's right. Breaking it down and then teaching men and teaching women. That's it. And the Bible says in 1 Timothy, the second chapter, mm -hmm. and verse 12, I suffer not a woman to teach. Yeah, nor the use of authority over the man, but to be in silence with all subjection. Objection. And you got women up teaching Sunday school and grown men. Even the deacons are being taught by the women. That's true. You fool. That's true. You pitiful briefcase carrying fool. As for my people. Do you hear the Bible talking? In the book of Isaiah chapter 3 and the verse 12. have to be put in order. That's order right. in the church. That's right. The church is all out of order. Out of order. Amen. And the people sit around and jump and shout. And say amen to a bunch of garbage because they don't know the Bible. Yeah. One thing I learned about preachers, they don't want you to know the Bible. Right. Because if you're ignorant, he can duke you. Mm -hmm. If you're ignorant, he can con you. And if you're ignorant, he can keep lying to you. That's right. Listen. Isaiah chapter 3 and we're at verse 12. Yeah. As for my people. God talking. As for my people. As for my people. Children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. And women. Women rule over them. Oh, my people. Oh, wait a minute. How do God feel about women ruling over his people? Oh, my people. I must really feel bad. <laughs> All my people, they would cause thee to error. Now, you that's being led by a woman bishop, a woman pastor, and some of you go to the churches here in Arizona, you know what they tell you? Well, we don't believe in woman pastors, but we don't, it's nothing wrong for them to preach. Or that hypocrite you got as a bishop say, well, we don't let them in the pulpit. We let them take their sermon down there. Listen, you can go to hell from any location, up here or down there. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? That's right. All right, let's go back to where you were. Back, Follow me. Back in Jeremiah chapter 23 and we're at verse 18. All right. For who had stood in the council of the Lord? Now, brothers and sisters, God's counsel, counsel. comes from Scripture. That's right. He counseled us through the prophets, through the apostles, and any counsel that detoured from what was given from the apostles, then that counsel is no good. That's right. Our greatest advice come from scripture. That's right. Our dumbest advice come from cemetery school. <laughs> I didn't say seminary, cemetery. That's right. I know many of you glad, you proud that you got some preacher, he got a PhD and D.D., you brag about how Dr. Cunningham is your pastor and <laughs> Dr. Lucifer is your overseer. Doctor, this one, I don't give two cents about your doctor. That's right. Here's my doctor bag right here. Amen. Understand this. College, Bible college, have never made a preacher. Takes the Holy Ghost to make preachers. That's right. Preaching is a divine act of God. That's right. School don't make preachers. No. You're going to be a preacher, heaven got to make you. You can get all the degrees all you want. You can get a diploma with your name on it. That don't mean nothing. Unless that's like a lot of people got a license and still can't drive. Amen. <laughs> a lot of men <laughs> got licenses and still can't preach. I know a brother, good brother, he got a license. <laughs> but to me, he can't drive. You couldn't get me to get in the car with him. To oh, him to Lord. drive me across the street. <laughs> and yet he got a license. Amen. And man, I won't tell you who he is, though, but, and, but he is here tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> All right. Come on, son. What did he say? For who has stood in the council of the Lord? Praise the name of God. Amen. Who hath stood in God's council? And hath perceived and heard his word. Uh -huh. Who hath marked his word? Now, have you heard God's word? Some folks say, well, yeah, I hear the word of God every time in church. Holy. Because a man read the word, that doesn't mean he's preaching the word. You can recite the word to a parrot, but a parrot don't preach it. Amen. Now, no man can preach this unless the spirit of God is in him. That's right. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me and hath anointed me to preach the gospel. He must be anointed. 
by God to preach this. And if he anointed by God to preach this, he will never let his preaching deviate from the word of God, nor will he ever preach to satisfy the public. That's right. If, if you've been watching the program, and I'm pretty sure you have, you can tell I ain't trying to satisfy nobody <laughs> but God. That's all these death threats I get and all this stuff, people write me and tell me, if you come here, we'll run you out of town. If you come here, we'll kill you. I've been told that if you come here, we'll cut your tongue out. I've been told if you come here, we'll hang you. I've been told everything. Mm -hmm. As if that's going to stop me from coming. That's right. You won't be able to get to me until you get to God first. Amen. God won't let you get to me unless this is will. That's right. Amen. If it's his will, then you'll kill me and take my life. But uh, that's all right. I'll be back. I'll be back. Someone say, who you think you is, Jesus? No. No, I don't believe him, Jesus. But I do know I'm coming back. I'm back. He said he's going to present to himself a glorious church, and I'm in that church. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey Amen. I'm in that church, I said. That's right. Glory to God. What did he say? Who hath mocked his word? Who hath mocked his word? And heard it. And heard it. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord is going forth in fury. This is the problem. People are not hearing the word of God in church hardly now, no more. No more. Some churches started out. Maybe with the church about the size of this stage. Some people used to call it storefront church. Some of the preachers were strict, firm, strong. All of a sudden they got a church about half the size of this auditorium. <clears throat> Before you know it, they took the Bible and kicked it out of the church. That's true. Now, things they used to not believe, now believe. Because preachers today have become so weak, they don't want to be unpopular. They know that certain beliefs are wrong. But because it's popular and they don't want to be unpopular, they go along to get along. See, God preacher won't do that. Uh -uh. God preacher won't go along with the masses just so he can be popular. No, uh -uh. I don't care how unpopular I become. One thing I know about the truth of God, it has a reputation now as being the most outspoken program in the world. That's right. That's true. It is that. That's right. It's the most outspoken program in the world, right. and people will learn more from this telecast in all the years they said in anybody church. That's right. All the years. That's right. I've gotten letters from people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and tell me how they've learned more from watching this program for several months than their lifetime being in church. Because it's a, it's a hurting thing to find out years later you was being lied to. 10, 20, and you gave your hard-earned money to these reptiles. That's true. Yeah. That's true. You gave your hard-earned money to these fellas. And sometimes you're caught up in your emotions. And you say, well, I'll stay here and see can I open his eyes. Imagine the member has to open the eyes of the leader? I'm the leader. That's right. That lets you know you're on a sinking ship. That's right. If the member got to read the compass and you got a captain who can't read the compass, you don't have no preacher. They be blind leaders. Listen at this. In the book of St. Matthew 15 and at verse 14. Jesus said. Let them alone. Let them alone. They be blind they leaders. They be blind leaders. Of the blind. Of the thought of the people. And preacher blind, people blind. That's right. And if the blind and leave if the, the blind, blind, leave the blind. Both. No, just the preacher. Both. Just the bishop. Both. Just the apostle. Both. Just the elder. Both. Just the Jerry Carroll head reverend. Both. Shall fall into the ditch. 
Both. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Preacher and follower. That's right. Now the Bible says again, like people, like priests. Like priests. If the preacher is blind to the truth of the scriptures, mm -hmm. then he keep you out of the kingdom of God. That's right. Women today don't know that it's wrong to wish up God bareheaded. Mm -hmm. They're innocent victims. They taught the preachers ignorantly tell them, well, the Bible say your hair is your covering. Don't just quote it. Tell me what it means. What it mean? That's what right. do the word covering mean? That's right. Huh? Because mm -hmm. covering don't mean cover. That's right. That's right. You got three words there. In the book of and First Corinthians. Chapter First Corinthians. Chapter eleven. You got uncovered, covered. Covering. That's right. Three words. That's right. So don't just quote to the women, your hair is your covering. covering. What is covering? That's right. You see what I mean by analyzing the Bible? That's it. I want this to be good for you, UPC file. <laughs> Are you devil out of hell? Women going to hell bareheaded. Yeah. And the preacher says, well, your hair is your covering. You don't need nothing on your head. That's a lie. That's a lie to hell. First Corinthians chapter 11. Follow me in your Bible. I want to take you to Bible school tonight. tonight. First Corinthians chapter 11. We'll start at verse 3. Follow me. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. I want you to know the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is, is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Let's analyze that. I don't believe in just reading. I got to take it apart right. in case I got an undercover Trinitarian here. That's right. The head of every man is God. The head of every man. And the head of every man is Christ. Give chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 11, we're at verse 3. The head of every man is what? Is Christ. The head of every man is the Son of God. The every, head of every man is Christ. The head of Christ. every man is Christ. The head of every man is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. You see, the Son of God, when he walked this earth, even his flesh and blood was superior to all other men. That's right. Because everybody was born in the world with sin, shaped to iniquity, but not him. That's right. Uh, that body was a perfect sacrifice. That body was perfect and fallible. And it was made as an offering without spot, without blemish, to take away the sins of creation. That's right. So the Lord that walked this earth, Jesus was the head of all men. And... And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. That's why the man was made first. Mm -hmm. And then the woman came from the man. That's right. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of what? And the head of Christ is God. That means the head of the Son of God was the Spirit. That's right. Or the head of the flesh was the Spirit. Right. The head of that body was the Spirit. That's why the body was called the Son of the Highest. The Spirit was the highest life. And the Son, which is the flesh, was a life lower than the Spirit. That's right. Your flesh is lower than the nature of God. Mm -hmm. All right. Every man praying or prophesying. Listen at this. Every man, Every man praying, or, praying prophesying, or prophesying. Having his head covered. Having something on his head. Dishonoreth his head. Now you foolish, hellish, devil-deceived bishops, elders, and evangelists. You mean to tell me, are you that dumb? You think Paul was going around <laughs> preaching to put hair on your head? Lord. Every man praying a prophesy. You think Paul was preaching, putting hair on your head? Mm. Some of you do it, you go to Walgreens. That's right. CVS. You don't like the hair that God gave you, so you go buy some. Mm. Uh -huh. You can't even match it right. I was on, <laughs> I saw a little girl <clears throat> coming down here. In the airport, she had light, light sandy brown hair, and, <clears throat> and she must have been rejoicing. It must have been her first time to ready to fly. Had her hair in a ponytail, light sandy brown hair, and a brunette ponytail in the back. Mm. Uh -huh. Just got all, just got all two-toned up there. <laughs> we teach our women to love the way God made you. That's right. Amen. If God gave it to you, you love it. That's right. What did he say? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. All right. But every woman, every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, what? Dishonoreth her head. Now, uncovered means bareheaded. That's right. You are born with a covering. That's right. That's right. You're born with a covering. That's right. Covering is hair, mm -hmm. but covering is incomplete. That's right. So here, if a woman pray a promise out of the head, 
uncovered. uncovered. I don't mean she doing this ball headed. No, no. That <laughs> don't mean she doing this ball headed. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. That right. means that her head is bare, but yet she have a covering. That's right. If it's winter time and it's cold out there, and your daughter wanna go out there and play, mama say, look, don't you go out there with nothing on your head. Cover your head. Cover. That's right. Come in here, let me comb your hair. You're combing the covering. That's right. But if she go outside with nothing on her head, the covering is bareheaded. That's right. The covering is uncovered. That's it. That's right. Covering me incomplete. That's right. Listen. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered, bareheaded, dishonoreth her head. It is on her head. For that is even all. Uh, even Listen. all. When you don't have nothing on your head, that is even as if as if she was shaving. You are shaving. For if the woman you not covered, and you think Paul was telling you put hair on? No, no. He's dealing with actually having something on your head. That's right. And he let you know that if you worship God with nothing.